This episode of the podcast is brought to you by KC Consulting. Trying to promote your cannabis business or dispensary through traditional channels can be frustrating. There are federal laws against advertising on TV and radio and advertising opportunities in general that are extremely limiting. Not to mention the ongoing need to produce new quality content, then share that content to a targeted audience, while monitoring and responding to incoming comments and questions can be overwhelming and time-consuming. KC Consulting is a premier social media marketing agency based in Dallas, Texas, that specializes in strategy, content creation, channel management, paid advertising, graphic design, and SEO, SEM services. The agency is hyper-focused on helping cannabis companies navigate through the uncharted waters that they've been forced to endure due to the lack of FDA regulation in regards to sales and marketing messaging. Managing your social media marketing efforts as a small to mid-sized business can be challenging. Social media marketing is especially challenging when operating a business in cannabis. Don't take on the burden of managing your social media channels alone. Take control of your social media marketing efforts with KC Consulting. Email them today for a free quote at social at kcconsulting.co. That's social at kcconsulting.co. Add value, not noise. KC Consulting. Hello everyone, Kevin Carrillo here and welcome to another episode of the Cannabinoid Connects podcast. My guests today are Chris DeNicola and Ashley Gerardi, co-founders at Crappy's Feel Good Hemp Co. These, my ears are so tiny, they still like stick out like <laughs> Mongo size, but oh well, it's all good. Hey, Mongo, good boy, Mongo. Good. Ashley, if you don't mind turning your own horizontally also and then that that'll be perfect and you know what i have the same issue with ear pods so uh yeah. i i was a wrestler in uh in another life <laughs> since i was five years old so i developed cauliflower ear um gotcha. and i can't wear them because they don't fit in my ear they don't they don't make a size or, or i guess they don't appeal to the the cauliflower crowd so <laughs> I get that. Are you from the the East Coast originally then? Because I know wrestling's big there. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I'm, I grew up in nice. New Mexico and I won two state championships there, but I wrestled in college Dang. year in Pennsylvania. So yeah, you're totally- Wow. It's Pennsylvania. Great. The Northeast is crazy. That's insane. Where in Pennsylvania? Uh, at Bucknell. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Ash yeah. is from near there and- um, yep. I grew up in Camp Hill, uh, Harrisburg area. Okay. Uh, one of our other partners is, yeah. Yeah. We've got some roots there. <laughs> yeah. I try to tell people that Pennsylvania wrestling is like the Texas of football. You know, like it's, it's that. It's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, hey, for those listening, I have Chris Denicola on. And Ashley Gerardi, uh, I hope I didn't butcher all his last names, uh, but they are the co-founders of Crappy's Feel Better Hemp Co., which is a line of go-to CBD products with one mission, and that is simply to make you feel better. So, Chris, Ashley, I really uh, am excited to have you on today. Really appreciate you making time for me in the audience. And uh, first, let's start off with, with both y'all's background. I know that when we first started recording, Ashley, you mentioned a uh, former tech background, right, before entering the cannabis industry. So why don't we start with you? And then, Chris, uh, we'll, we'll transition over to, to you and your background. Oh, thank you, Kevin. And it's a pleasure being on your podcast. Uh, so yeah, kind of my background, uh, I got a BS in chemistry and jumped right into the like quality assurance testing realm for um, a separation science company. From there, uh, after getting my feet wet for about a year, transitioned over to the synthetic group, um, doing a lot of R&D work. Um, love organic chemistry, that's kind of my bread and butter. And then, oh geez, about six years ago, had the opportunity to work on an MBA, and that kind of opened a lot of doors for me, uh, and I transitioned over to the business development um, sector and just have had a blast the last three to four years working on the cannabis hemp side of things for quality assurance, consumer safety testing. 
Wow. And with business development, was it, did it initially start right in cannabis or did you work in other industries in the capacity of business development, then get into cannabis? Nope. That was my first experience. So it was unique and uh, I don't think I'll ever experience anything like it again. Wow. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. And, and Chris, how about you? What's, what's your background? Um, varied, <laughs> but st <laughs> definitely uh, start off as a chemist. Um, got a BS in chemistry back in the late 90s, um, made the jump directly to big pharma, which, you know, at the time, that's when you, you made it, you won. If you got into like a Merck or a GSK or a Y, something like that. But as soon as I got in there after a couple of years, they started having the, the downturns or the, the layoffs that a lot of big pharma companies were having because of the different recalls, everything else that was going on. Uh, so kind of took a leap and went to work in a university actually for my boss that was from Merck, uh, from there joined a company called ResTech, uh, where we created a lot of the, um, consumables and, and actually the, the parts that work for testing instruments that actually do the magic, do the work. Um, you know, so we, we built a whole new line of products there that you know even though we were the last to market with with a product we actually took all the customer feedback the market research the the wants and needs of the consumer built it into a new product line that was just instantly adopted and you know the it took a lot of for those the approaches what sorry were, what were those needs that you found uh when when incorporating into your product line what did you see yeah, it was um, ruggedness, which, you know, we were doing products that were for drugs of abuse testing, which is mainly in urine. And the salts in urine really, sorry to be gross, but they, they really destroy instruments and the consumables. So we, we designed um, a new product that was much more resilient to that. So it could last, I don't know, five, 10,000 injections were normal. Um, piece of equipment would last about 200, 300 injections. So we were also able to make it go faster. We were able to make it more sensitive. So we made people a lot of money, you know, 10, 12 years ago when, when that drugs of abuse testing uh, was really taking off. And, you know, people were getting paid $3,000, $4,000 a test. And we took them from 30 minutes down to 90 seconds. We made people a lot of money. So you know, we took a lot of that, that philosophy and that thought, um, well, skipping ahead, but then kind of went on to work in the cannabis industry since 2013, 2014, have seen a lot of good, seen a lot of bad. Um, I'm sure everybody has their, their bad stories to, to tell, um, but it's mainly, you know, gold rush kind of a thing. People came in that maybe weren't right for this market. They just wanted to make a quick buck. Um, so I really took a lot of philosophy and morality lessons from, from that experience to say, how do we do something better? And a lot of that um, experience, a lot of those lessons, a lot of the education that, you know, I and Ash had to pay for, you know, we're, we're putting into this company, Crappies Feel Better. Mm -hmm. what, and so in 2013, is that when y'all linked up and, and started Crappies Hemp Co? No. How did you, how did y'all find each other and, and what's the origin story there? Yeah, uh, I'll do the find each other and then Ash can do the, the origin story. Um, <laughs> but we, Ash and I started working together back in, um, I don't know, 2011, 2012, something like that at a um, company called ResTech. So that's where we were building these, these new consumable and testing products. Um, just was a good team. Good, good fit. Mm hmm and then how we got to crappies. It's, it's your turn to tell you that, tell that story. I was gonna say on the tech side, um, Chris spent a lot of time in the lab really building his knowledge uh, around, you know, terpenes, the minor cannabinoids. Um, and then once we got to a point of, okay, you know, we, we feel good about the products we wanted to launch with, it was, well, you know, we need a brand. And we kicked around a couple ideas and we still have some brands in the back of our pockets. Um, but I know kind of like the banter with the team, um, we threw out the idea of, you know, how about crappies? Um, and Chris, uh, with all of his experience, got a chance to travel the world a lot. And I mean, 
gosh, Chris, you were probably on the road three weeks out of the month. So, you know, that, that takes a wear and, yeah, that takes a wear and tear on a lot of people. You know, everybody thinks, oh, you get to travel. And I've experienced it myself, not as much as Chris. And it wears on you. Um, and that kind of gets into some of these products as well. But crappy. You feel crappy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, we Chris would come back or we'd be on the phone. And, man, he was just kind of that... Uh, <laughs> glass half full type of guy um grumpy you know and <laughs> grumpy all right I, I, was, I was trying to be nice about it no, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so you know that that continued for a while so we finally started calling him crappy like hey chris why are you being so crappy um <laughs> so crappy was crappy and then yeah. we were like well you know hey we might actually have something here when we were kind of joking around about that going yeah people don't want to feel crappy we want to make them feel better um so we, we kind of did a soft launch with it and it went over great. People were just loving the brand, engaging with us, having a good time. And um, Kevin, you know, I saw you at the show and, and we had a lot of people walking by the booth, just being and laughing and, you know, tugging on their, their friend's shoulder or significant going, Hey, check that out. Um, and we'd have conversations just off of the name. So it's, yeah. Yeah. We, we're really happy with the brand. Thanks to crappy <laughs> <laughs> well no and i love i love how the the name came about that's so funny chris uh and i'm i'm the same way man after a long day of travel or like if i haven't eaten uh i tend to get hangry so i know that that crappy feeling and <laughs> but you know before we started recording i was complimenting y'all on the brand because I got to tell you, as a marketing specialist, you know, and being in the industry for 10 years, I really like it because of the the way in which you can simplify the messaging, right? You can easily convey the messaging and the value add of the product. So um, to your point, Ashley, when you said that we saw each other at the CBD Expo show in, in Houston two weeks ago, um, I, that was one of the first things that kind of was a showstopper for me. I, I, I saw the branding, I saw the messaging and I thought, wow, okay, you've got a brand name crappies. And then you have certain products that are specific to the ailments that make you feel crappy. Right. So, yep. um, let's talk a little bit about that, about that product line and, and, you know, how, how are, is crappies harnessing some of the minor cannabinoids that were we're continually learning about day to day. Sure. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, I can kind of take the 30,000 foot view. And then Chris, if you want to get into the, the okay. details, does that sound good? Yeah. All right, cool. So it mentioned earlier, you know, Chris has spent years working on, you know, different formulations, terpene blends, um, working with those minor cannabinoids. So we kind of took the approach of reverse engineering. Like we wanted to go after specific you know, effects, um, pain points people are having, consumers are having in, with their daily routines, and then work backwards from that. So somebody wants to unwind at the end of the day, they're stressed out. We start there and actually formulate backwards to, okay, we know what terpene blends to use, what minor cannabinoids we think we need to start with, and we kind of beta test it then after that. We first start with ourselves. Um, once we feel we get it to a good point, we have a, a small group that um, we trust their feedback with. They're very direct and open with us and we dial in these awesome products. And Chris, if you want to get into the, the details about it. Yeah. And, you know, with, with unwinding at the end of the day, there's certain things that um, went into causing that either stress or, or tightness to happen. But what we also figured out is someone that wants to unwind at the end of the day doesn't necessarily want to be a couch potato or couch locked. You know, what we see with a lot of these relaxed products that are out there is you're just a puddle or, you know, some kind of zombie at the end of the day. And that's not what we wanted. All of our products, we really wanted to ensure that there's a functionality to them that you can still um, be coherent. Um, not the perfect word, but, you know, for the, the sleep products so that if something happens, you can wake up and be alert, not, um, like an alarm. Yeah. Like not have that groggy feeling, right? Like, like, wake well, up. the groggy right. second, we definitely wanted to make sure that there was no groggy feeling, but let's just say there's an alarm at the middle of the night or a kid wakes you up that you're not an ambient zombie or, or something like that. 
uh, you're still coherent, but then, you know, let's just say everything's all clear, you're still able to go back to sleep. You're not sitting there for another three hours, not being able to rest. But we wanted, you know, we had the same set of criteria, or similar sets of criteria for each one of the products that we made. They all had to, to be functional, be alert, um, but do the things that we wanted them to. When we got into the minor cannabinoids, let's just say towards the middle of what was that 2019 when the miners really started to be more available and a little bit more cost effective um, we started playing around with them just to see what they did uh, we always make just a you know a straight single cannabinoid product at first to see what does it do um, i can tell the story of, of cbn first time i tried that made a 10 milligram formula with our with our technology and that thing knocked me out for two, three days. I mean, it was just way too strong. I was like, okay, you know, everybody's talking about how you need 20 megs, 25 megs. And that was, um, that was a CBN isolate? That wasn't full? Just CBN isolate. Correct. Yeah. So dialed that back down to five megs. Yeah, knocked me out for a day, day and a half. Brought it down to one mig. And what we noticed was um, muscle spasms, pain just went away so fast with just that one mig nothing else in it. So we, we realized, okay, we now know what this effective dose is. So we then took the, the one mig of CBN plus, uh, let's just say 15 megs of CBG. And only because it's a CBD industry, are we putting CBD in? Otherwise, I really wouldn't include it. Um, and figured out, okay, that is a great base for all of, for a majority of ailments, physical ailments that people are looking for. But if you look across the research of cannabis or marijuana the main differences of let's just say an og kush and a super lemon haze aren't the cannabinoids they're usually roughly the same it's the terpene blends so what we really spent a lot of time on was figuring out what terpene blends do what and you know i know a lot of companies are saying okay we're going to start with limonene and then add myrcene uh, because these two are supposed to do x y and z we took the approach of we're going to start with um, somebody's pre-made strain or replica of a strain, and we're going to see what it does. And we're going to test as many of those that we, that we can to see what happens. And then we end up kind of blending blends to, you know, really fine tune what's out there. And that's how we got the sleep product, the chill product, uh, the go-getter product, the fade fighter focus product. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been that art rather than focusing on one terpene we want the end effect to us the end effect is way more important right and i was gonna say a good example of that is if if you have the um party prep and the fade fighter um packaging you'll see on the back it's the same two cannabinoids uh same ratio same i should say same concentrations the difference and the dif difference you f feel in those effects are the terpenes Fade Fighter gives you the kind of that focus clarity. Party Prep helps with those. Uh, I take it all the time before a presentation, um, just kind of those jitters or when I'm out golfing, um, the first tee box jitters, those always get to me. But same cannabinoids, again, same concentration. Um, it's the terpenes that are really dialing in that effect. Yeah, it's incredible to, to, to see how much the terpenes can affect the overall your overall feel and experience with it, the various strains, but then also how those terpenes kind of aim and target certain ailments, right? And can kind of help from a therapeutic or medicinal perspective as well. Um, so, and it sounds like Crappy's process of, of testing, research and development when it comes to its product line is very thorough. So, um, because it starts internally, I know you guys are, are testing these products yourselves, dialing it back if it's a bit too strong, like Chris mentioned with the CBN. So is there any kind of back and forth with your customer base as well? Like, do, do the customers ever provide feedback and then y'all take that feedback and kind of tweak certain products? Yeah. I mean, we've got Absolutely. two main ones. Um, Ash, I'll let you handle the flavors, but I'll tackle the uh, Muscle Marvel first. Um, we. I, I personally hate the, the cooling rubs and the, the minty smell of like some of the rubs and salves that are out there. I've never been an Icy Hot fan. So when we started making these products, I wanted everything to be you know, natural and, and not have an odor. And what we found 
I think it was only two weeks after we launched our, our muscle marvel, our muscle rub. We had a lot of people write back and say, oh, can you add mint to this? Can you make it cooling? It's like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but um, you And know, then I told them, yes, one... we have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But we got that there's... from a lot of our customers. Yeah. yeah, and there was a customer down in Hawaii that was requesting it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make one real quick um, with, you know, we, we have the, the right ingredients. Made it, sent it to her. Uh, I let her know that it was coming. And she's like, wow, this, this is exactly what we were looking for. Um, so we made a few more to send off to uh, some other customers that were looking for it. I'd say from, from that first email to the launch of the cooling, naturally cooling muscle marvel, was 30 days with new labels and everything. So, I mean, we, we jumped on that pretty quick. Got you. Yeah. And then we've got another one. I'll let Ash explain. So we have a lot of our product reviews on the Instagram accounts that we have. We want, you know, there was one thing for us to promote the products, but it's always better to hear it from the customer. We take the good, the bad, everything in between. Um, and we want people to get a, a data point or data points um, from people using the products. So we got a lot of feedback too, that initially when we launched the tablets, the first three, um, kind of our social line, the party prep, the hangover helper and the fade fighter, we didn't have any flavors built into them. So you really got that hempy kind of bitter aftertaste from chewing the products. Cause that's how you have to use those is you chew them, you swallow them, you get that fast relief, um, that acting uh, formulation into your system. Um, so we got a lot of people saying, you know, can you do anything about the flavors? Internally, we started working on some things. Again, went through a similar process that Chris mentioned. Um, and then our second lot of those products and then the launch of the three new tablets that we just came out with that are chewable, the Chill Out, um, the Bounce Back, and the Go-Getter, we had flavors built into them. We didn't do any marketing initially. Um, we're working on a campaign for that. But instantly, we started getting feedback going, wow, these taste you know, different and in a very good way. So it was like, all right, awesome. We didn't prep anybody and we were getting that feedback we were hoping to get. Right. So we definitely take a lot of, um, you know, we're very open-minded. We're always looking to improve our products. So we love working with customers. Um, if anybody ever wants to reach out and, and work with us, we'll add you to our, our data, um, beta testing, excuse me, for that opportunity. Yeah, no, it's good that you have those those uh, lines of communication open, especially, I mean, as we know, humans are all so different, right? The way in which food affects us or certain medicines and even cannabis, right? So um, it, it's good that, that y'all are open to that feedback. And then, of course, tweaking those products. Um, another thing- Actually, can I jump on one thing you just said right there? So people are very different. And, and one of the things that we tested and really worked on was to make sure that the end result of our products hit as many people successfully as we can. So it's, it's one thing to say that we have a, a um, stress relieving product, um, but it's another to say it works across 85% of the people. And it's, that was definitely true when we started playing around or, or formulating our sleep product because everybody has a different reason for why they can't sleep. Is it because their brain's on? Is it because they hurt? Is it because um, they just can't sleep? Um, and then, you know, how do they wake up in the morning? So, I mean, we went through a lot of formulations and a lot of testing to find a sleep product that hit as many people as possible, got them to sleep relatively quickly, but softly, and then allowed them to wake up without any grogginess. Mm -hmm. So they completely agree with, you know, everybody's so different with how they respond to cannabis. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because, so going back to my earlier comments about like the branding and, and the, the, the simplicity of the messaging, because again, the brand name crappies, and then each product kind of speaks to uh, what it, what it helps resolve, right? Whether it's sleep mm -hmm. or, or stress or anxiety, inflammation. So, um, given that there is no, uh, consumer oversight for, for messaging when it comes to sales and marketing materials, ha has that been a challenge, especially for a company like crappies that, that speaks specifically about certain ailments and what it can do for them? I'll, so, uh, I'll jump in. Oh. I was going to say one thing. We don't talk a lot about the ailments and we do have oversight. 
So like our banking, our credit card processors, they're constantly looking at our what I mean is in our pages. I'm just I'm saying in general, not so, your company. I'm, um, like the lack of from a consumer right from a consumer perspective mm -hmm. right right yeah yeah i was i would say like um being a consumer myself um for cbd products i mean yeah that even with that knowledge you know there's trendy words that pop up and so people jump on them for brands you know with marketing and stuff because that's the hot hottest and latest greatest thing so we gotta you know use that kind of marketing um we've had many people that are new to try and cbd um maybe do a little research or they just start looking for products and you know they see an energy product they take it and they're like oh I'm, I'm feeling the effect and what they don't realize is if you read the fine print they'll say with caffeine and so there's a lot of products out there i should say there's a handful of products out there that are using men melatonin using the caffeine um we don't use any of that we don't try to have additives to dial in those effects i mean this is all from the plant Mm -hmm. So I think there's a little bit we have to overcome with educating customers that way and just make sure, you know, do your homework, read the labels. Um, I would, I mean, Chris, is there anything else you want to add as far as like the additives go? Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the reasons it took us a while to do the, the flavors is we needed to, or I wanted, we all really wanted to find a natural flavor. We didn't want to put synthetics in there. That would have been easy. We just didn't want it in the, the product itself. Um, but for the, you know, the additives, yeah, I wanted to make sure that we could be as close to the plant as possible. If we needed to add melatonin to, to help you fall asleep, what was the point? You can go and buy melatonin a lot cheaper than cheaper, what yeah. I would charge okay. you for. Mm -hmm. Um, if you needed caffeine, go get a cup of coffee or something. You know, we wanted to give you a, a natural version. Um, the, the CBC, CBG go-getter, you know, there's no CBD in it. I mean, that thing is such a unique formula that, you know, if you need caffeine taking that product, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Um, it's it's such a unique, and it, Go-Getter is a perfect name. It's just, I'm going to go get everything done. Mm -hmm. And well, and then Ashley, like you being the CMO. And I think that, oh, yep. Well, well, you broke up, Ash. Sorry. With, oh, with, sorry. With you being the CMO, Ashley, and like, you know, me my background is social media marketing specifically, right? So I know firsthand the challenges when it comes to marketing a cannabis or hemp company within Facebook or Instagram or Twitter because of, of their censorship and, and, and policies due to the, the lack of FDA oversight, as we talked about, right? So yeah. do you see that in your, in your area of work when it comes to marketing? Um, and do you, like, how do you overcome some of those challenges? Oh, absolutely. And why I take power down, because I can never turn my brain off from it bugging the heck out of me for things like that. Um, yeah, so like, right now we still promotions on Instagram. And that kills me because our biggest problem hasn't been the effectiveness of the product, um, the brand acceptance, it's visibility. We're smart. We're a startup company. We're small. Yeah. Um, we don't have, you know, the six figures right now to go out and do major campaigns. So I'd love to do promotions. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a pain point for a lot of companies yeah. that there's still those restrictions. Um, I hope the acceptance changes soon. Um, I, I think there are like ourselves, there's a lot of good products out there that just don't get the visibility because we're, we're restricted to only certain channels. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely a pain point for us. I I'd piggyback on that. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd piggyback on that and say, um, the, why we picked the names of the products that we did was so that we could stay away from all of the claims that people make wildly about CBD, that it's a cure-all for everything. And we, we look at it as it's just one of the tools that the hemp product, hemp plant actually has. And we incorporate the other cannabinoids, we incorporate the terpenes, um, and we incorporate the technology so that you actually absorb them. You know, there, there's such that, that culture of this early cannabis and, and hemp market that is I need as much CBD as possible yep. and it's just wrong and it, 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 it actually makes the market worse because then people think I need a big number of CBD to make something happen 
And that's not the, that's not actually the case. You need to be able to absorb it. And that's what we really pioneered, but we don't talk about it a lot because what we talk about, what consumer wants to know is what are they going to feel? What's the effect? What does it do? What are they trying yep. to solve? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's why you don't see how much, how much of any of the cannabinoids are on the front of our packaging because it doesn't matter. We built it to do the thing that is written on the front. Yeah. And Chris, to your point too, then, I mean, we talked a lot about the terpenes and I, I still feel they're very under appreciated in the market. Yeah. Um, but again, a consumer doesn't, for the most part, your average consumer doesn't want to look at a, a packaging label and go, okay, it has, you know, myrcene in it, or it has these terpenes. They just, okay, fade fighter. I, I need to take that because that's the problem I'm having right now. I have trouble sleeping power down. That's yeah. going to help yeah. me. Do you, do you think, and, and that, that's definitely true, right? I mean, with so much content out there and just, you're, we're distracted by so much, right? To, to get to a point where we can, it's going to take time, basically is what I'm saying, to fully yep. educate the consumer base around, you know, the efficacy of, of not only cannabis, but every specific cannabinoid, right? But um, do you think at some point that we'll get there? I mean, like, you know, th with, with so much growing support and more awareness of the plant, like it just seems like a natural progression that people would just un inherently learn more about it, especially as the plant becomes more legitimized in the medical field, right? Um, I've got so many different answers to that. Probably, <laughs> I mean, my, my one is, is probably not going to make me fans, but, you know, nobody most consumers out there don't know what vitamins or minerals do. Most people out there don't know um, what the majority of things that they're taking at, during a day do. Um, you know, but they need still... to know they have to take a vitamin. They know they sure. need to take a vitamin because it's good. Or, or they need to have a healthy diet. And if you don't have yeah. a healthy diet, then you take supplements. But there are sub supplements that don't absorb. You know, every other day there's, you know, eggs are bad, eggs are good, coffee's bad, coffee's good, red wine's bad, red wine's good. So to get to a point where we've now every educated everybody in the country on each individual cannabinoid, the combinations of cannabinoids, the terpenes, I think is a very tall order where it's, it's a, there's, it's how, how they're put together the technology that's used to make them safe and absorbed, the terpenes that are there to have the effects and that they know what to take when and that it's a safe dose. Those are the main things. Um, when I see people, you know, you know, taking a tincture and they have no idea how much to take. So they're just two droppers full. And then they're like, Whoa, I don't, I feel weird, man. Like, Oh, I could just sit here. Like that's, that's, the bad thing of this market to say, hey, something from the 1800s, which is a tincture, is the thing you need to be taking today for your health. And I, trust us, it's CBD's great. That's that's what kills me about this. It's it's not that. Um, there, there's more of an art to it. There's more of a science yeah. to it than just putting some hemp oil and some MCT and calling it good. And, and I think I. I mean, I think that it's changing, though. I mean, like you are, you're, you're always going to have those, you know, Cheech and Chong kind of legacy stoners that just want to get high, right? And and that's kind of the perception, I guess, overall of of the industry for people that have no idea about cannabis or are not educated in the space. Um, but I'm I'm a bit more hopeful in that. I think that over time, I mean, here's the thing. I think that it's going to be kind of go two paths. You're going to have your recreational market where, you know, you're going to be able to use buzzwords and different things that, again, like you said, speak right to what it does because that's what they care about as a consumer. But then you're also going to have the pharmaceutical side where, you know, once it does enter that market, it's going to be so dialed in where they are going to be very prescriptive. Like, you know, this cannabinoid does this at, and take it at this time and dose this much. And here's how many times per week you should take it. I mean, I, I feel like it's I, going to be treated like every pharmaceutical drug is today. You know, I mean, I, I, we could probably sit here for six hours with a beer and, and discuss that. But having worked in big pharma where we had CB1, CB2 projects, um, Pharma's it, been working on these things for a long time. And so if they wanted them, they would have had them. That was in 2013, right? I'm sorry? 
Was that in 2013 when you were when you were uh, when you're what you're talking about what you're referring to? No, I've been working in pharma since uh, the early 2000s. So when we were at Merck, we had we had cannabinoid projects. When I was at Johnson Matthey, we were devising pathways for synthetic cannabinoids. They decided to go the opiate path because it was much more profitable. Um, there are there have been projects for pain, for sleep, for cancer, uh, working on those the different cannabinoids since 60s and 70s. Um, the cannabinoids themselves on their own, it, like an individual cannabinoid, it, it's, it's good. It's not pharma good. That's why we have Marinol. It, it, people that were taking Marinol for cancer would much rather have had cannabis because of the other compounds and the terpenes that actually made them feel better. THC on its own, it's a downer and it doesn't really, it's not great. Um, but to, to, get a con to get a new drug through our FDA system, there are so many restrictions and so many um, hurdles that you would have to jump through that a product like Crappies would never be approved because there's so many different things in there that are doing something. And it's how do you prove it? How do you show it? How do you control it? Um, and what are the side effects? Yeah. And it, it's, what, wait, uh, I just don't, I mean, I know pharma's working on these new compounds because it's going to be a lot easier for them yeah. now that it's, you know, going legal, but you know, there, there's already compounds that are on the market that were kind of cannabis derived. Like there's backbones or there's motifs of, of cannabinoids that are already on the market. Like they've, they've learned what they could, but then they go and change the molecule where they need to change it to make something more specific happen without a lot of off target hits. Yeah. You're saying a lot. I, I, what I'm, I'm, and I follow you. I, I, I agree with you in that it is super difficult to get things, these drugs approved because of the federal regulation that currently stands schedule one listing. And, um, I understand that the isolating the cannabinoids and not going full spectrum has its downfall. It has its drawbacks, right? Because like you said, THC alone doesn't have the full benefit and effect as it would with all the other minor, minor cannabinoids in a full spectrum delivery. Um, so I think yeah. we're saying the same thing. It's just that yeah. the timing, right? In that like, like, yeah. you know, the public support, the state's, overturning the, the federal regulation at the state level. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, but, and, and, I, and I gotta be clear, like when I talk about the future of medicine, I'm not talking about the next 10 years when hopefully it becomes federally legal. I'm talking about the future future, right? When we get to oh, gotcha. yep. a, where it's like, we're super dialed in. And uh, that seems like it's gonna be an exciting time. And again, that's gonna take a lot of work, a lot of education, a lot of studies to get there. but you know, I'm, Absolutely. I'm, you know, I'm hopeful. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I know our products, we've, we've gotten feedback from products that, you know, if we were probably even to say them here, they would be, they would constitute medical claims. So I'm not going to go through and say everything, but we've seen some really interesting feedback and results um, on products that we weren't necessarily sure of, but it came down to, because we were able to make our cannabinoids completely soluble, therefore more bioavailable. And we defocused CBD, which only kind of hits CB2. The other cannabinoids hit both very strongly. Um, we've seen some really cool effects. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's yeah. the most common thing we, we hear now. And it, it took us a couple of times to hear it, to, to fully understand it. But like somebody would take a tablet, chew it up, go do something, come back to us like at an expo. 20, 30 minutes later, and they're like, your product actually works. And they hear actually <laughs> works. We we're like, did you catch that too? And, and I think that's, that speaks to the tech, the, the formulations. But um, I, I think, Kevin, where you were going to, like in the future, not only that consumer wants to be educated and understand the products a little bit more, um, rather than just, okay, I'm going to take a tincture and take it because it's CBD. Um, I think the format is also, we're going to see that shift. 
who wants to carry around a tincture in their pocket, in their purse? Um, that's where our tablets, I mean, we are ahead of the curve a little bit, but when we get customers going from tinctures or from gummies to the tablets, just the ease of use makes all the difference in the world too. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's what I was going to ask you next. So like what trends are y'all seeing from Crappy's perspective when it comes to like the delivery method? So, and, and you just touched on it. So you're kind of seeing a, a, a trend from tinctures and other things to that tablet that you mentioned earlier? We're, once we have that interaction and they try our products, I still think it's it's really on for a consumer just to go, I need a pill. I need a gel cap. I need a chewable tablet. They, especially for new people in this market, they're going to what they're seeing all over the place, what they've, they've heard from others and it's tincture still. Right. Um, it's gummies. And, and the reason for the soft gels kind of taking off, you know, a couple of years back was people wanted to know what is a dose and it's very right. difficult Good to point. dose a dropper bottle um, or just taking some, you know, a, a tincture, whatever. Uh, that's, that's a very, that's not, a, it's a very un-American thing to do. We're, we're used to having one chewable Flintstone vitamin or, you know, take two Advil and call me in the morning kind of a thing. It's the, we wanted something that was, shelf stable, easy to dose, easy to take. Um, but we also wanted it to um, be absorbed very quickly. By having a chewable tablet instead of a swallowable tablet, we get that um, saliva creation and absor absorption starting to happen in the sublingual glands. So that within five to 10 to 15 minutes, you're starting to feel those effects. Rather than taking a tincture or a gummy bear or you know a, a swallowable tablet, where it could take anywhere from one to three hours to feel anything. I mean, people in pain don't want to wait. Um, the only time we made the swallowable tablet was actually for the sleep, because we wanted to give people a buffer to say, you've got some time between when you take it to when you want to go to sleep. Yeah, well, that's, it's interesting point. So like, what? who exactly is your target audience then or your customer base? Because like, in the cannabis industry, you've got so many different ways of consuming, right? Like we talked about the stoner earlier that wakes up and hits his bong. You've got grandma and grandpa who rub the, the salve or the, the relief rub on their knees and joints. Um, you have people that are in serious pain or want to sleep and, and want that quick effect fast. So they're taking this tablet. Um, so like who, who exactly are you guys targeting? If, if it's not the people taking tinctures and, and doing the un-American yeah. kind of methods that you mentioned. Yeah. I'm going to preface this when we're talking about it as we came up with the brand and wanted to launch just before COVID hit. So we <laughs> had to pivot. Um, first thinking it was going to be the, you know, early 20s to maybe early 40s demographic. Um, but we actually have an acceptance from everything from like 18 years old all the way up to 75, 80 years old. Um, it, sometimes it's a standalone customer from any of that, from anybody in that age range to, hey, you know, um, some parent tried something like a topical first, liked it, and then passed it off into their book reading group. Um, so we definitely see that that acceptance and people trying the products all over the board. I can't say it's any one thing in particular, um, but we have a lot of stay-at-home parents have, you know, trying these products um, and adopting them into their routine. Um, professionals, athletes, I mean, anybody you can think of, we, we've had every, the depth and breadth is, is there. Um, Chris, I mean, I don't know if there's any main yeah. group that you can think of. I, I will say it's, it's the people that um, are either concerned about trying hemp products or they've tried hemp products, spent a lot of money and have been burned. And like, you know, I don't, I don't see the point. I don't understand what all the hype's about. Um, and the people that are confused that it's like, wait, you're telling me that CBD does anything I want it to do. When do I take it? What do I take it for? We, we see our demographics as the ones that just want the simplicity to just understand. I take this, then this now, this is going to happen and I can take that later and trust it. And that's, that's the main group we're, we're going for is the people that um, 
just aren't sure um, or have been burned. Yeah. And we've all spent, you know, $120 on a tincture that really didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why you see even our pricing model, uh, our $5 trial packets, you know, we for want three people doses, yeah. for three doses. We want people to, to be able to give this a go um, and try it for themselves without having a lot of risk and without having a lot of out-of-pocket expense. Yeah, that that makes sense. And I mean, that, that, that particular group that you mentioned who's been burned in the past, I mean, they, that's, that's a large group because, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, you know, a lot of these products, especially on Amazon virtually contain little to no CBD in it at all. Right. So yep. there's a lot of snake oil out there and, and it's unfortunate because it detracts a lot of those uh, consumers from the industry. Um, Completely. So, and it's unfortunate too, because it, yeah. <laughs> these products do so much um, for people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and you know, it, it does come down to the, the tech as well. Like if you can't absorb them, you're never going to feel them. And that's, you know, that's why these products have traditionally been smoked is because it goes in the lungs and goes in your blood. Boom, you're good to go. But anytime you try to eat the product, the cannabinoids themselves are not soluble. So you never absorb them. Yeah. That's why you saw the, the rise in MCT, then the, the rise in nano, then water soluble. Um, if you look at you know, our, our tech blog on our blog site, um, we have our testing data on there to show the, the cannabinoid solubility in those different formats. And that's how we were able to know that, okay, once we get the cannabinoids in, you feel the effects from those, what's the next thing? The next thing is combining the cannabinoids to make sure something specific happens, then finding the terpene blend to make sure that the emotional or, or um, you know, perceived effect is the one you want to have. Mm-hmm. And I also want to touch on that, that I, I don't want consumers thinking, okay, all I need is a tablet. As long as I've got that <laughs> format, I'm going to feel right. this. There's still a lot of, th- there's our tech in it, which helps with that delivery mechanism. So the delivery, having it in a tablet just helps to get it into your system quicker, but yeah. not all tablets are treated the same, just so everybody no. knows that. And we won't make an inhalable product because we're not gonna put things in people's lungs. Uh, we've played around with different drink formulas, but then it's, what's the point of the drink when the product is designed to be at the ready and with you all the time? Um, we never wanted to, to make a product where you needed some other um, apparatus to make the product work, like a vape pen or a drink or an inhaler. Interesting. Okay. And so, uh, you, and Ashley, you touched on like you had to pivot during the, the pandemic. So yeah. <laughs> why, why don't you both, like, as we, as we wrap up here, uh, what it's like operating a business or even trying to launch a business during the pandemic and like, you know, what, what your future outlook looks for 2020 now that you've pivoted. So I guess I'll start future outlook. I'm going to jump right to that for 2021. I'm sleeping. I'm just going to sleep for the whole year to catch up on the lack of it. Um, I will say I, I love the entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I think if there's any go-getters out there, anybody that has a passion for things, um, make sure whatever you're doing, you have that passion for because it's it's your whole life. It becomes your whole life um, uh, when starting a business. I will say though, it's been a great learning experience, both personally and professionally. Um, one cool thing when we kicked it off is, you know, we we were bootstrapping this. Um, so a lot of the early vintage photos that you see in our Instagram account are actually from the team members going back into their photo albums or asking family members for pictures. And so we actually use those for our initial like few dozen posts. Um, so we've had to get creative. We had to be um, very innovative with given resources, time and money. So it's, it's been one heck of a great experience. Um, couldn't have done it without the other other team members as well, um, family, friends supporting us too. Uh, it's it's been a great experience. I'll say back to 2021 on a serious note. Now um, I'm really looking forward to our pet line. So we've worked on that for many years. We've worked with a lot of vets um, and some of our beta customers that have tried the crappies products um, on the human line that have also tried the pet line and. There are some phenomenal results there. And um, I, I have a cat, um, I've owned dogs in the past. To be able to see the difference that those tabs have done for 
for the pets, um, it, it's been phenomenal. Like that's, that's one of the reasons why I do this is just to see the outcomes. I've been, I've been searching for a, like a go-to pet CBD brand and cause I, we have three dogs. So I oh, nice. have to check that out when they uh, launch next year. So yeah. Definitely. I'll put it in yep. the, the sample box for you. <laughs> yep. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Chris, how about you? What do you? What is your outlook for 2021, and what's it been like operating the business during uh, the pandemic? Yeah, um, I will say, you know, I, I noticed the the pandemic coming. What was it? December, January. Listen, a lot of like international news, so heard something bad was rumbling uh, when it finally hit in on, March. So, and we... so I did too because I remember. <laughs> Up <laughs> in October, October 2019, and watching YouTube videos of people in, in China, them telling them to go back in their houses. But I never predicted that we would be locked down in March. Yeah. So you predict yeah. that? Did you predict it or no? No, no I nope. didn't. I yeah. uh, um, I don't think anybody. But I, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember. There's some. There were some uh, conferences going on at the beginning of the year that I skipped because, you know, a lot of it were international. Like there are a bunch of international people coming uh, from Europe and from Asia. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going, <laughs> I'm out. Um, and so, you know, when we started this, we, we, we designed this as a, you know, as a on the go, being social, being with your friends um, kind of product. So, you know, with that pivot, we had to get creative with our our messaging and our positioning to say you know fade fighter is more for focus uh party preps more for um any kind like more social anxiety but you could have social anxiety being on a zoom call being on um you know giving a presentation for work like it that just because you're not with someone doesn't mean you don't have social anxiety and then that hangover helper was more of a just a re recovery product you can get hangovers from working out too much from just being up for a week working on something um but what we we decided kind of towards the the summer was we needed to to pivot and and make specific products that were designed for people's everyday routine um lifestyle and we needed to make product names that just spoke a little softer to them mm -hmm. so that's why you see the go-getter uh, the, the chill out and the bounce back, um, just because we wanted to, to make that first impression to people, um, a little more acceptable. Um, my outlook for, for 2021, um, you know, Ash took mine, which was the pet line. Um, <laughs> I'm super excited for that. That's one of the ones I've been working on the longest, uh, made it for, for my little dog, Maggie. Um, so I mean, there's, there's so many stories I could tell about that, that pet product, but I'll say that the second product, and it actually has nothing to do with, with me or probably you, Kevin, but it's, it's our product for women's health. And, you know, with, with Ashley's help, um, unfortunately, she's been a, a very willing guinea pig. <laughs> it paid <laughs> um, off though. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've, we've designed something that's a really good, um, provides a lot of PMS relief and, yep. you know, as a mitol replacement, um, not my place to really talk about that. That's yeah. more ashes. Um, but it's, <laughs> yeah, and that's it's yeah. unique. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. I, I would definitely say be, because of those terpenes, um, you know, not only do you get, you know, the relief of, of the cramps, um, and the nausea, but you also get that uplift, um, and that energy, like the go-getter, you, you need to get things done. Um, you know, a lot of times with being a professional, I dreaded when I was about to, to get my period because I would be out for a day. Um, I couldn't do anything. And, you know, thank goodness it didn't happen too many times of being on the road, but travel was just hard to do. And with this product, um, that's completely changed things for me. Wow. And we've sent that out to a lot of beta testers too. And, and right now it's like, hey, we get comments back all the time. I know you're not launching until next year, but can you keep me supplied with that? And it's like, <laughs> that's awesome news. Sure. Great yeah. feedback. Yeah, I mean, and, it's it's well. It, I just just want to interject and say it's incredible the the therapeutic and, and like medicinal benefits, especially for women that, that cannabis has. Right? I mean, like I mentioned this in my previous episode with Dr. Lola uh, O, and and uh, in Jack Herrer's book, 
uh, Emperor Wears No Clothes, he mentions that Queen Elizabeth would take, you know, uh, cannabis oil for her menstrual cramps and whatnot, just like you're talking mm-hmm. about. So this has yep. been on for a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'd say our, our formula, and I won't mention what it is, but I mean, it, it has no CBD in it at all. And we've, we've picked some other unique cannabinoids that really provide a, a singular response. It works great. And then, like Ash said, the uh, terpene blend. So we'll have a daytime and an evening formula. Um, and then we're working on one other thing to, to go along with that. But, you know, we've got other things in the, in the pipeline for next year. It's just what those to get to Those are the highlights, when. I think. Yeah, yeah. those are the main two highlights. What to prioritize, I get it. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's yeah. stay busy. And uh, I really look forward to, uh, you know, the launch of those pet products like you mentioned and, uh, and all the other great stuff that Crappies has planned for 2021, guys. So thanks again for, for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank oh, you for the time. Likewise, yeah, it was a pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, where can people find y'all like for your website or social media channels? Sure. So our website is www.crappiesfeelbetter.com and uh, check us out on Instagram. That's our social media platform at Crappies Feel Better. Uh, we're actually gearing up to do a cool give, uh, give back program with the holiday season and we're tying in a giveaway as well. So it's a give back giveaway combo. And that's on Instagram where they can find that? Yep, that's going to be posting here uh, at the end of the week. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much. And uh, we look forward to having you on in the near future as things develop. Likewise. Continue listening to the podcast. They're really awesome. So it was a pleasure being on. Thank you so much. And thanks for listening, guys. Bye. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye.